human being has created the earth. No human being has plowed our land but we. No human being but we have the right to share the produce. Once told by Bhagirath Maji. Bhagirath Maji was the founder of the Kherwar movement against the British government in 1874. He was not the first and not the last one to believe in this philosophy. This very belief has led countless tribals across the world to rise against any and every tyrant. Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of The Revolution, Untold Story of Indian Freedom Struggle. Till now, we have seen the rising sense of discontent in the mass led by the Shannashi and Fokids. The battle for the glory of the royals has already turned into a battle of survival for the commoners. So today, we will take a sneak peek into the various incidents that led to the peasant and tribal uprising. In our so-called culture, tribals are the ones who live amidst nature. They live in the rugged mountains and dense forests. History has shown us how they have been repeatedly subjected to tyranny by the rulers. They were simple nature dwellers, exploited by traders. Across the globe, it is a common phenomenon for the tribes to hold on to their customs, their socio-cultural rituals, irrespective of age, era or young. They are the ones who stood their ground irrespective of the race or sect of the invaders. Probably that's why no memoir on the struggle for independence could ever be written without mentioning the resistance led by the tribal freedom fighters. One of the most interesting aspects of tribal movements is that often we would find no or more than one leader. If we try to mention every tribal uprising that has led to India's struggle for independence, even till the mark of mutiny, it would itself take weeks if not months. So today we will try to understand the emotion behind those uprisings from various parts of India. As recorded by the historians and showcased in our earlier episodes, we know it was the fertile land of Bengal where the traders of the East India Company set up their base. No wonder the battle of the people for freedom started from the same land. To start with, we have seen how the Fakirs and Shannashis led people from different economic and social backgrounds to rise against the British company. While the attack on East India Trade Center at Bakirganj by a group of Fakirs in 1763 can be identified as the initiation of the aforementioned Shannashi Fakir rebellion, it was soon followed by the Sandeep Revolt, Chuar Bidroho in Medinipur Bankura districts of Bengal and the Maji Revolt in Santal Pargana. Sandeep Revolt was more of an agrarian movement led by Abu Torap Choudhury against the company appointed revenue collector Gokul Ghosh's atrocity. The farmers of Sandeep Island in the south of Noakhali, presently in Bangladesh, were united when Abu Torab fought the British army led by Captain Nolikins in 1767. Though they were defeated rather obviously and Abu Torab lost his life in the process, this is recognized as the first anti-British peasant movement in Bengal, while the Maji revolt is found to be effective intermittently for almost 15 years from 1770 to 1785. Chuar Bidroho, 
persisted for almost three decades, sparsely both temporarily and spatially, under the leadership of different leaders from 1769 to 1799. The common reason for those revolts was the oppression of the British company and their constant persuasion to extract more tax. The same can be seen in the account of British administrator L.S.S. O'Malley. In the famous Bengal district gazetteer of 1911, in March 1766, government resolved to send an expedition into the country west and northwest of Medinipur to coerce them into paying revenue and to capture and demolish as many of their strongholds as possible. Soon, following the handover of rights to collect taxes, the British administrators also started formalizing land ownership. The Adivashis mostly were dependent on the forest for livelihood. In addition to the small areas of land that they transformed to be favorable for agriculture, the simple ploy was to increase the taxes to a limit that they end up becoming indebted to the Mahajans, who were already in alliance with the British. Thus, the British company would capture the right of the land from the sons of the soil. It is commonly believed that the Chuar Bidroho broke out in the Medinipur area and spread to jungle mahals, covering Bakura, Purulia and parts of eastern Bihar. But O'Malley mentioned that in December 1769 and again in November 1770, the Chuars of the hills between Ghatshila and Barabhum broke out but did not make any raid into Medinipur. Tribals from Panchet Patkum joined the rebels and led by the king of Dhalbhum, Jagannath Singh and Jagiddar of Kailapal, Shubha Singh, invaded Ghatshila and captured the Narsingar fort. Eventually, they lost the battle against the British army and Shubh Singh was seized and hanged on the spot due to his rebellious act. In the following year, near Dhatka, another group of tribals rose against the British as chewers, but their traditional weapons were no match for the British army. In the meantime, the Great Bengal Famine had hit the region in 1770. Along with different parts of the Bengal, Santal Pargona was also severely hit by the famine. Instead of showing any remorse to the people, the British atrocity reached new heights. In such circumstances, the Adivashis from Santal Pargona were united by Tilak Machi and led to the revolt against the British operation in 1772. They attacked and looted the company's treasury at Bhagalpur and distributed everything amongst the peasants and the tribesmen. In response, Hastings dispatched 800 soldiers under Captain Brooke to capture Tilak Maji. They unleashed their wrath on the tribal people, irrespective of their age or gender, but failed to get hold of the Jabra Paharia. In 1778, at Ramgar Cantonment, Tilak Maji led his men to an inspired attack on the Punjab regiment. They were so fierce that even with the traditional weapons, they forced the British army to flee their post. Soon, August Cleveland was appointed as the revenue collector of Munger, Bhagalpur and Rajmahul. He took the famous method of divide and rule to destroy the unity and suppress the tribal population. Not only did he establish communication with the tribesmen, but he also recruited them as his local army. Cleveland also extended his efforts to recruit Tilak Maji for his army, but he understood Cleveland's ploy. Instead, he spread a message written on Salif that said, we must be united 
and led to a mass movement. In January 1784, Tilak led his tribesmen to attack Bhagalpur again. During the battle with the British army, Tilak hit Cleveland with his poisoned arrow, which eventually caused his demise. In a few days, Tilak Maji with his men disappeared in the Tilapur forest and adopted guerrilla warfare against the British. The British army led by Lieutenant General Irey surrounded the forest, but he and his men held the enemy at bay for several weeks. It is believed eventually Tilak Maji was betrayed by one of his men and was caught in the middle of one fateful night of 12th January 1785. British were determined to make an example out of Tilak and accordingly after his capture he was tied to a horse and dragged to Bhagalpur. It is said he was still alive when eventually on 13 January of 1785 his lacerated body was hung from a banyan tree publicly. Though this was the end of Tilak Maji's short-lived life which inspired numerous tribal resistance against the British colonial power to name a few of them Bhumij revolt in Manbhum in 1798 the Chero uprising in Palamu 1810 the Munda uprising in Tamar 1819 to 1820 the Kol rebellion 1833 the second bhumij revolt 1834 and the santal hul 1855 almost around the same time the bastar area under the present state of chatisgarh saw a similar anti british movement famously known as the halba rebellion governor of dongar ajmer singh led the revolt of halba in 1774 and he received complete support from not only his army but also from the tribesmen in the area but the highlight of his revolt was not the revolters rather the oppressors because it was not only the british but also the marathas the british armies and the marathas suppressed the revolt and killed many of the halba tribal people in the process though the halba army and tribesmen lost their battle the history of the district of bastar changed forever in the meantime different parts of bengal saw tribal uprisings against the british one such anti british struggle was the chakma rebellion chakmas are the largest ethnic group in the chitagang hill tracts region in southern bangladesh they also comprise a major population in the northeastern states of india that is mizoram tripura arunachal pradesh and assam during the moghal rules followed by a treaty signed with jalal khan raja of the chakma in 1715 they were declared independent in return jalal khan agreed to provide the east india company with cotton and salt as a form of payment to show his allegiance Immediately in the following year of the handover of the rights to collect revenue in 1761 the British company started increasing tax rates the chakmas were then forced to pay revenue by currency also the british started interfering with the internal affairs of the chakmas as a result the chakmas became offended and gradually became rebellious towards the british rule In 1777 the English increased the rate of revenues in the Chittagong hill tracts. In April 1777 with the permission of King Juan Baksh the chief naive Ranu Khan declared revolt. As a result an independent flag of Chakma was hoisted in the hills. They also expelled the royal employees of the English and the english from the administration soon they launched guerrilla warfare against the british army following multiple failed attempts in 1780 1782 1785 to capture the hill tracts british company was forced to start peace negotiation 
in 1787 the chakma king juan baksh khan accepted the sovereignty of the company in return for payment of 500 mounds of cotton annually by the terms of the treaty chakma king juan baksh khan was bound to maintain peace in his territory and he was also handed over the responsibility of the collection of revenue in return the english agreed to stop the immigration from the plains of the chitagang hill tract in the next episode we will explore how the northern bengal joined the peasants movement we'll talk about that more in the next episode thank you stay safe stay healthy see you on our next episode namaste want to learn more about the untold story of indian freedom struggle keep listening we got a page from episode notes and resources visit us at http colon forward slash forward slash www dot ks productions usa dot com subscribe to the revolution untold story of indian freedom struggle at apple podcast stitcher spotify or wherever you get your audio Be sure to leave us a review, give us 5 stars and please talk about us to your friends and family. We want to hear directly from you too, so send us an email. Our email address is the revolution at ksproductionsusa.com. The Revolution Untold Story of Indian Freedom Struggle is produced by KS Productions INC in collaboration with Pastel Entertainment. Our executive producers are Kaushik Mazumdar and Shushmita Mazumdar from KS Productions INC and Shauli Mazumdar from Pastel Entertainment. Our researcher is Dipanjan Maithi, content developed by Dipanjan Maithi and Kaushik Mazumdar. Original music composed and designed by Shottojit Shen. Also use compositions by Kazi Nasrul Islam. Stay safe, stay healthy.